Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 16, and over the next few videos, we're gonna build a 3D printer from scratch. In fact, this machine here is currently printing off the first part of a RepRap Omrod 2. So this first video, we're just gonna have a look at some of the underlying principles and basic parts of a 3D printer. And we're gonna look at two different models. We're gonna look at a RepRap Huxley, costing around about 200 pounds, and a MakerBot Replicator 2X, which is probably nearer 2,000 pounds. So, in my opinion, you, if it's set up right, a RepRap machine can produce much the same results as something that's really quite expensive. So, let's get stuck in and have a look at the basic models and the basic parts that every single 3D printer has. Uh, there's a few different technologies. We're going to um, focus on this fused deposition modelling, um, which is common with RepRap and MakerBot, Ultimakers. And what FDM is, is a uh, fancy way of saying a glorified glue gun. But instead of a glue stick, you've got plastic filament. And instead of a glue gun that heats up when you press the trigger, you have um, a hot end, which heats up and melts the plastic. Instead of a trigger to squeeze it out, you've got an extruder mechanism, which drags the filament through, through the Bowden, Bowden tube, and then pushes it out of the hot end to form the part. Other things that you'll find on pretty much all 3D printers is a way of moving the axes. On 99% of the, uh, the Cartesian robots, as they're called, um, you'll have an X-axis, a Y-axis, and a Z-axis, which moves this whole assembly up and down. So let's have a look about how this works. We flip the machine over. You can see that it's actually a pretty simple mechanism. You've got a single stepper motor driving an axis. Um, as that rotates, you've got a pair of linear rails and a belt which drags the axis up and down. In this case, the build plate is a heated build plate and it's mounted on a couple of simple bits of what looks like laser cut MDF. Now this is a RepRap Huxley and RepRap is a, a name that you'll come across a lot in 3D printers and it's a really interesting concept. So here's the MakerBot replicator 2x in progress printing apart for our new RepRap Ormerod uh, machine and it's you can see it's exactly the same concept this model it's called the 2x because it actually has two extruders we're just using the left hand one at the moment so you can actually um, with a, a dual extruder setup you can print two materials at the same time create supports or different colors um, it's got a heated bed um, and you can see the linear guide rails here and again, we'll have stepper motors located here to drive the x-axis, one there to drive the, uh, the y-axis, and there'll be another stepper motor down here at the bottom. This actually uses um, a lead screw type design to drive the z-axis, which is gonna be a little bit smoother. So it's a better build quality, but it's exactly the same. It can produce the same kind of um, resolution as a rep wrap and you're paying your 1,500, 2,000 pounds, I forget exactly how much these machines are, you're paying for the convenience of having a unit that is, in theory, plug and play. But anyone who owns a MakerBot will tell you they are anything but, they still require some technical expertise and some ability to solve problems, clear block nozzles, deal with firmware and software issues. So even though the goal is to create a maintenance-free item, they're not quite there yet. But one thing is for sure, it is, as a consumer product, really quite a nice piece of kit, certainly when you compare it to the more Heath Robinson RepRap Huxley. That said, there are plenty of different designs of RepRap, and uh, we'll take a look at some of those now. So the RepRap project um, has been going for a few years now, and it's been thought up um, by a team from Bath University uh, with Dr. Adrian Bowyer. Now it's a really, really interesting concept and it's probably best that uh, Dr. Bowyer tells you himself. I started the RepRap printer by a biomimetic analogy. That is to say, an analogy taking an idea in nature and putting it into engineering. The object in nature that I copied was the phenomenon of symbiosis. In particular, if we look at the symbiosis between the insects and the plants, which has been running for 130 million years since the late Jurassic, that is an incredibly successful and st stable symbiosis. And we all know how it works. The plants need to pollinate each other, but they can't move, so they make nectar as well as pollen. The insects visit the plant to obtain the nectar, 
and in so doing so transfer the pollen to the other plant. The insects get a meal, the plants get to reproduce, everybody's happy, both species benefit from the relationship. The RepRap printer is intended to be exactly the same, with people taking the role of insects and the printer taking the role of the flowers. Because the RepRap printer doesn't just copy itself, it also makes useful goods. And those goods are the equivalent of the nectar, and that nectar, those goods, rewards the people who assemble the machine because those people are helping the machine to reproduce in just the same way that the insects help the flowers to reproduce. So much like flowers in the natural world, the RepRap um, printer has evolved um, to have lots and lots of different species. Some of the uh, printers that I personally have made, um, the, the Mendels, the, the Huxley, which we saw at the start of this video, which is a smaller version of the Mendel. And all, both of those are evolutionary biologists. Huxley, Mendel, the original one. Darwin, of course, is the Huxley, which was made by a now sadly defunct company called RepRap Pro. And that was a RepRap Pro kit. And formerly, I've had a business that manufactured Prusa i3s, uh, which is a design um, come up with by Joseph Prusa. And he, again, under the open source, published it and allowed people to produce them um, for free. So the model that we'll be creating in this series of videos is known as the Ormerod. And I've decided to make this printer not necessarily because it's the best printer, um, but because it's quite an interesting design. It's got a really low parts count. We can see that it uses an aluminium extrusion to provide the structure in the Z. It uses big, chunky uh, 12 mil linear rails, which is quite unusual. They're usually a lot smaller hardware, and it's a, a cantilever gantry. So instead of having just a uh, stepper motor on either side driving up two lead screws, it's just got a single axis. So I've never made one of these machines. In the past, I've made dozens, uh, if not scores, of um, Prusa i3s, and I'm a little, it's a fantastic design, but I'm a little bit bored of making those now. So we're gonna try something entirely new, and the part that we are currently printing is this, part number 546. Here you can see it in SolidWorks. And part number 546, if we look at our assembly diagram, is the X carriage, which is one of the, actually the bigger part, so it's this item here, part 546. And this is the uh, computer model of the machine that we'll be building over the next few weeks. So take time to explore the reprap.org forum. It's a fascinating read. And you can even see now that in a recent survey, the RepRap project accounts for a huge number of all of the 3D printers currently in operation. So RepRap stands for Self-Replicating Rapid Prototyper. And that's because this machine is what's known as a rapid prototyper, a 3D printer. And it's self-replicating because any white part here has been designed to be printed by a 3D printer. And the goal of the RepRap project is to ultimately have a machine that can recreate itself entirely. Um, at this point, however, only the white plastic bits have been created on the RepRap platform. Obviously, the motors have been bought in, the hardware, or sometimes known as the vitamins, have been uh, bought in, and the brain of the, uh, the machine is the control board. And again, virtually all of the, um, the 3D printers you'll come across, um, especially the home use ones, will use some form of um, Arduino board. This is a RepRap Melzi, but they all pretty much um, use an Arduino platform. There's different types of controller, but they all do the same thing. They'll generally have a channel to drive each of the, uh, the steppers. So this here is the X channel the Y channel, Z channel, and the extruder, okay? Because of course there is a stepper motor driving the filament as well. So that's a brief overview of the RepRap project and the introduction to the 3D printing series of videos that we're gonna be doing. Next week, hopefully we'll have all of the 3D printed components completed, and then we can laser cut some of the plate components and start on the mechanical build. Now, if you like 3D printing, 
and things of that nature, then subscribe to our channel. We've got a really interesting series of videos uh, about the Open Racer project where you can design, manufacture a 112th radio controlled car. So do send us a comment if you want to see more of this. Let us know exactly what you want to see and we'll see you next week for the mechanical build.